What's up, Divinator? One, two, and two, and it's list day! Ah, yes, list day. And today we are continuing my best of summoning mechanics special edition. The best of and worst of lists of the summon mechanics are some of the biggest videos on my channel, but they're old. You know, my set looks terrible, my auto is not great, uh, I, I don't have the cool beard. So they're out of date. And not only that, but like we, a bunch of cards have come out since then, so it's time to update them anyway. Despite the fact that it is no longer the XC or the Synchro or the Fusion Era, we still get trickles of support for these various summoning mechanics, so it's kind of cool to see what has come out long after it's due, and has it been good enough to power creep the awesome stuff from before. For this list, I'm going to ease up on my rule that banned and limited cards get shoved towards the 1 and 2 slots, because there's a lot of banned XC cards, so I'm just gonna try to order them, you know, based on how good they actually are when compared to each other, not if they're just banned, that means they're broke, and that is what it is. So without further ado, let's get started with the top 10 best XC monsters in Yugi Man. Number 10 is Lavalval Chain. Lavalval Chain is one of my favorite rank 4s. Why? Because it's good. Lavalval Chain is a rank 4 fire sea serpent monster with 1800 attack and 1000 defense with the following effect. Made of two level 4 monsters. Generic. Once per turn, you can detach one material from this card to activate one of these two effects. You can either A, send one card from your deck to the graveyard, <laughs> or B, move one monster from your deck to the top of your deck. That first effect is pretty much why the card is currently banned. It is a generic rank four, it's super easy to make, and it can dump any card out of your deck. Not monster, not spell, not trap, the whole lot of them. No offense, but I think it's kind of gross. It's every foolish burial we got in an easily accessible extra deck monster. Feels good. I miss Lavalval -Val Chain dearly because that kind of easy accessible setup makes so many cool plays possible. The issue is it also makes so many FTKs possible. Uh. But don't let all that awesome I can send anything to my graveyard to make any play I want ever work get you from ignoring that second ability. Being able to top deck a monster is basically like searching a monster if you have some, uh, some way of drawing it immediately afterwards. You gotta upstart goblin in your hand, Lavalval Chain, top deck the monster you need, upstart goblin. Feels good. I love me some Lavalval Chain. Number 9 is True King of All Calamities, or in the OCG, VFD, which stands for Very Fair Dragon. It's pretty apt that True King is the number 9 option because it is a rank 9. <laughs> My name's Kaka Carrot Cake, and I'm real Super Sand. <laughs> Rank 9 Dark Worm XC Monster with 3k attack and defense. Big boy. That's not surprising, it's a rank 9. And oddly, uh, despite the fact there isn't tons of 9s in the game, uh, they're, they're pretty good at, at making X this XC monster. It's the, like the only one you make, but it's the only one you need to make, so why not? He's made of two or more level 9 monsters. Woot. Once per turn, during either player's turn, you can detach one material from this card to declare one attribute. All monsters on the field become that attribute, and your opponent cannot activate monsters in their possession with that attribute either. Okay, this is a quick effect. That's in fantastic O. Activate it during your standby phase, call uh, divine, and then all your opponent's stuff's divine, which they're not gonna be able to do anything with, and then all their, so they're just, it borks their whole field. But that's not the best use of the card. The fact that it changes the attribute of stuff and then says you can't use that attribute does not say that you can't pick the attribute that stuff already is. And it also says that your opponent can't use things in their possession with that attribute, not on the field. So if you call something like fire, they can't use ash blossom in their hand. It doesn't need to be something on the field, just in their possession. So if you call a thing they already got, it borks like the whole play. So if they're a fire deck, you call fire. It's kind of counterintuitive. You think you'd want to call something they can't use, but no, it's, it's a lot of times it's actually better to call the thing that they are. It also has a second effect of something about if true Dracos or Kings would kill the card in your hand, you can destroy your opponent's crap. I've never seen anyone use this. I frankly just learned that it did that by reading my own script. Uh, I, I think true kings would be more likely to use this than true draco true draco tends not to have an extra deck so they wouldn't even be able to make this thing because they don't aren't running it you learn something new every day folks number eight's my favorite card in all of Yu-Gi-Oh! hands down no exceptions totally awesome totally awesome everything's cool when you're a rank two totally awesome is a rank two water aqua monster with 2200 attack zero defense 
what do? Made of two level two aqua monsters. Okay, that's pretty ungeneric and probably why, despite the fact it's my favorite card, I, I, I could only put him at eight because in a bubble, he's probably one of the best XE monsters we have in the entirety of the game, but it is landlocked to a very specific deck, Paleo Frogs, because <laughs> they're level two aquas, but that's okay. Because in that one deck, Holy crap, does this card work really good. Once per turn, during the standby phase, you can detach one material from this card to summon one frog monster from your deck. Ho <laughs> ho! And if that's all it did, this would be a fantastic engine card. But there's two more, baby. Once per turn, when your opponent activates a spell, trap, or monster effect, you can send one aqua monster from your field or hand to the graveyard to negate that activation, and if you do, destroy it. There's a Ven. Oh, every time there's a Ven after if you do, destroy it, it's always something stupid. You can set that card. Yes, you can negate, destroy, and then set the card you negated to your side of the field. Hippity hoppity, your shit's now my property. King idiot. It doesn't just negate it steals. It also has a third effect that if it's sent to the graveyard, you can add one water monster from your graveyard to your hand. If you just pick Toad itself, it goes back to the extra deck to be made one more time. Well, that's some good recursion. Or you can add back a swap frog so you can go into your plays again. That third effect helps you mitigate the cost of the second effect and means that if you summon this stupid thing with Bahamut Shark and it doesn't have any material, you don't have any frogs you deck, so you can't really use it to its full extent, you can at least use itself to go to the graveyard to negate the thing and then put itself back for Bahamut Shark next turn. Oh, this card is so stupidly good! And the secret use, play one copy of it in your extra deck and keep milling it with Galdogra until you kill yourself. I love this card. It's an engine. It's a boss monster. It's my favorite XC monster. I could make the whole video just totally awesome 10, 10, 10 times. 10, 10 times Toad. Number seven's a new boy on the block. Divine Arsenal, Double A Zeus, Sky Thunder, Mecha Wing Gundam, Ult Ultraman. Ridiculous jumble of words name aside, this card is really stupidly good. A rank 12 light machine monster with 3k attack and defense. <laughs> rank 12, what are you doing? Overlaying two quasar dragons? I, I mean, you... You could. Two level 12 monsters. Once per turn, if an XC monster battled, you can also XC summon this thing by slapping it over an XC monster you control. Its material becomes this thing's material. Ah, so that's normally how you play it. You go to your battle phase, you punch with something, main phase two, slap a -roo. And if you got Gossip Shadow, you can stick more crap under it. That's a surprise tool that can help us later. Quick effect, detach two materials from this card to send every other card on the field to the graveyard. Whoa, that is not a destroy. That is a quick effect. Just send it to graveyard for the whole field. The summoning condition is easy, just a little slow, but what you get for it is a quick effect, ridiculous board nuke. It's also got a, another effect. Once per turn, if another card you control will be destroyed by a battle or card effect, you can attach one card from your hand, deck, or extra deck to this card as material. I mean, your opponent's probably destroying it. Uh, I've never used this. I've never seen someone use this ability, but it's neat that it can reload itself because spending two to nuke the field is a little expensive. Unless you got Gossip Shadow, then it's free, baby. The real cheese is in your Melfies because Medufimami and uh, Joyous Melfies can just kind of attack for freeze. So there uh, means you can just kind of slap this thing. It means your little tiny bunny transforms into a death gundam that's funny now that's a brocan shokan damn zeus you powerful to continue the theme of xc monsters you can just slap on top of other xc monsters being a good thing for a card to do cyber dragon infinity cyber dragon infinity is a rank six light machine monster yes it is a six technically despite the fact you play it in rank five decks why is that because you can slap it over Cyber Dragon Nova to summon it. Cyber Dragon Nova is cool, but what does Cyber Dragon Infinity do when you slap it on top? 2100 attack, 1600 defense. Not the best stats in the world, but we can fix that. Gains 200 attack for each material attached to it. So if you slapped it over the Nova Dragon, it gets its materials too. So there you go. That's at least three, right? Once per turn, you can target one face up attack position monster attached to this card as material. <laughs> it can just give your opponent to suck. What? You can actually suck up one of your own guys too if you if there was a guy in your field you don't want there and uh you just want to give this thing an attack boost that is your option but it's better to steal one of your opponent's crap 
making an opponent's monster exceed material uh, is removing it from the field, but it's not going to grave or anything. It's like in limbo because it's exceed material. So that's some really good removal. Once per turn when a card or effect is activated, quick effect, you can attach one material from this card, negate that activation. And if you do, destroy it. It's a negatey boy. Easy summoning condition, great removal, omni negate. And frankly, it's one of the best negates we have on a monster because it's not just negate the activation of a thing, it's or effect. So unlike Toad or Herald of Perfection, this will get like those pesky graveyard stuff too. So that's, that's good negating. Number five is MX Saber Invoker. Been a long time, baby. Rank three Earth Warrior, 16 under attack, 500 defense. Two level three monsters. Seems like uh, a rank three monster to me. Once per turn, you can detach one material from this card. Special summon one level four earth warrior or beast warrior monster from your deck in defense position. It, but it's destroyed during the end phase. Why do they think that's a balancing mechanic? Destroyed during the end phase. That'll never happen. I think they thought that it's a rank three summoning level fours. So there wouldn't be any cheese to be had. But then they gave us like splash engines like Terror Top and Tour Guide and things like that where they kind of stay out of your way. So you just have a secondary engine just to make this thing and it searches your whole freaking deck. When will they learn that in order to balance summoning from your deck effects, they need to negate the effect of the thing summoned, not blow it up in the end phase like an idiot. <laughs> I miss you, MX Saber Invoker. You were part of my favorite build of UAs ever. Tour Guide, Jin, MX Saber Invoker. Detach for midfielder. Swap midfielder for ace. Discard Necros of Colossalus to search cycle. Cycle summon Colossalus from the grave using the Jin for Jin lock and negate and demise. <laughs> There's a broke on Shoka. Number four is Zodiac Broad Bull. It's the same thing as MX Saber Invoker. What do you know? Rank four with mysteries, attacks, and defenses. Neat. Once per turn, you can also exceed some of this card using a face up Zodiac monster you control as material. That's one, baby. It just has to have a different name than this thing. It doesn't even have to be a monster with a level. It can just be another XC monster. So you can just be like, Summon a Zodiac, slap one on there, slap one on one on there, slap this thing on. You can just stack them. You can stack your Zodiacs as high as you want, and then you can just push them over, make a mess. <laughs> yeah, if being able to exceed summon with just one material is a good, a good summoning mechanic. There's a reason why half of these things in this deck are like on the ban list or were at one point. But they all do that. What is this thing's special ability? It gains attack and defense equal to everything stuck to it. That's a Zodiac monster. That's that's actually pretty good. This can be this could be big. Once per turn, you can detach a material from this card to add a Beast Warrior monster that can be normal summoned from your deck to your hand. It's Rota for Beast Warriors. It's tanky. It's a walking tanky. Basically, you search your whip tail, but but you could search any Beast Warrior you want. Basically, which made your Zodiacs a pretty good splashable engine as long as like your main engine was like Fire Fist or Bujins or something, and you need to get that Beast Warrior monster. Exceed monsters that search craft from your deck are good. It's almost like being able to exceed summon readily whenever you want. Your Rota is a powerful maneuver. <laughs> I'd go, go figure. Here's one you Yu-Gi-Oh players haven't probably thought of in a long time. Teller Knight Ptolemaios. Yeah, baby. Rank four light warrior XC monster with 550 attack and 2600 defense. Dead ass though. Ass, ass, ass. Two or more level four monsters. Ooh, here we go. Once per chain. <laughs> oh, nah. During either player's turn, you can detach three materials from this card. Special summon from your extra deck. A monster that is one rank higher than this thing and then use this thing and all of its materials as the new monster's materials. You make Cyber Dragon Nova. And then you slap Infinity on it. Whoa! My rank four deck can make Cyber Dragon Infinity one of the most powerful negates we have. As if rank fours needed something else they could do. You know how many rank fours I'm leaving off this list? that are all just absolutely fantastic. This list could have been all rank fours, but I can't do that. That's cheesy, even though I want to, because they're all so good. This one breaks it so bad that you can just, you basically can see something whenever the hell you want. Uh, yeah, this thing got banned pretty quick, because uh, there's rules, baby. You can't break them all the time. I like how it's once per chain, like, just in case. <laughs> what kind of balancing action is that? I like how it's a quick effect, so you can, like, chain it to something like a, a bottomless strap hole. I don't know. <laughs> it won't even work. And do you guys know it has a second effect? You can attach seven materials from this card to skip your opponent's turn. <laughs> I mean, that's ridiculous. It's broken. You'll never use, you'll never do that. But it's funny that you can. And I think in order to do that, its third effect allows you during the end phase to attach a, a, next, a Teller Knight monster from your extra deck to this thing as material. So, like, I think you're supposed to, like, sit on this for a while and then <laughs> try to get seven. I don't know. You're never going to do that. It's, it's for making infinity. I don't know. I don't know what you want from me. 
This video is going to be a million years long because I love all these cards. Number two, number 86, Rongo Bongo. Rongo Mini Ad. Uh, <laughs> one Invincible Boy. Rank four, go figure. Two or more, max five. Oh, thank you. A Dark Warrior with only 1,500 attack and defense, how good it could it possibly be? Well, depending on how many materials it is, it just accrues effects. If it's got one material, it can't be killed by battle. Oh, that's cute, because it's got 1,500 attack and defense. It'll probably get killed by battle, so it's cool that you can't. If it's got two material, gains 1,500 attack and defense. Ooh, now we're big boy. 3k, 3k. Three material, unaffected by other card effects. Oh, oh no. Four material. Your opponent cannot normal or special summon monsters. And five material. Once per turn, you can destroy all cards your opponent controls. <laughs> <laughs> Lol. So if you manage to cheese this thing out with four or five materials, your opponent can't do anything and you're just nuking their board. Gossip Shadow for the win, baby. The only saving grace is during your opponent's end phase, you must detach a material from this card. So if your opponent can somehow not die for a couple of turns, they can outlast the immunity and the summon abilities. But then you still got a 3k beater that can't be killed by battle. And this thing has been destroying and punching you and and keeping you from summoning for the last like three turns. Summoning this thing is often a way to win the duel. <laughs> and if it's got four materials, you can't even kaiju it. That's, that's rude. It's incredibly disrespectful. The card was legal for a really long time because getting that fourth material requires a lot of other cheese and they were just focusing on getting rid of the cheese and not this card itself until we got Gossip Shadow. Then they then people figured out you can just make it and then shove stuff under it later and, and get that four. And I think Gossip Shadow might be a problem. It's a good card. It's a really good card. Super big boy. All right, we do have some honorable mentions. Um, I'm gonna go through them really quick because this video is already gonna be like 80 minutes long. First off, we got Dengirsu. Got power creeped a little and, uh, and also, uh, Orcus got kind of beat up, so it's it's not as good as it used to be. But if, assuming you could summon it just like you used to, that's good removal, baby. That's good removal. Doesn't even target, just sends it to Graveyard. Mmm. We also got Super Dreadnought Rail Cannon Libe. Now here we go, big number. They can make a bunch of attacks, it gets even bigger, it probably wins you the game. And you can slap it over another rank 10 train you got. Uh, cause again, being able to cheese out Xe monsters by slapping them on top of other Xe monsters is a really, really good way of summoning an Xe monster. Give me more materials. And we got number 95, Galaxy Eyes Doesn't Matter Dragon. Doesn't Matter Dragon is, uh, that's actually kind of mean. Big number. It's got that special, I can slap it on top of something else. I like putting on that full armor Photon Dragon. Because Fat Dragon, uh, he can pop a card and then you can slap this on it. That seems pretty good. And it can mill like three dragons out of your deck or something like that. And it's like for cost. It's like really, really... Really, really nice. Bottle Chain is probably, the, it's like the same card, but it's a little easier to make and it's available to more decks. But this thing is more of an absolute world ending effect in the decks that make it. So uh, it's a, it's huge. And again, just like the, just like the Rail Cannon, it can attack a bunch of times too. So big number. Thank you so much guys for watching the video. If you guys want to help support the channel, check out my links down in the description below. I've got links to the Discord, Facebook, and Patreon if you want to get in touch with me, help with the lists, things like that. Or if you want to save some money, you can head over to MetaMat's website, use my code TROLLMETA at checkout. You can save 10% off a custom cloth playmat like one of these bad boys. Or if you want to waste your money on expensive cardboard, use my TCG player link in the description below and put off your financial obligations. And number one, the best XE monster in the game, the Shockmaster. Right. The Shockmaster! <laughs> I told you. Oh, God. I love talking about Shockmaster because I can use that clip. A rank four light fairy, 2300 attack, 1600 defense. What's it made of? Three level fours. Hmm, seems bad. What could it possibly do to make up for that huge loss of card advantage? Once per turn, you can detach a material from this card, declare one type of card, monster, spell, or trap, and that type of card cannot be activated until the end of your opponent's next end phase. Hashtag unlock the shock, baby. You can just detach a material and turn off an entire card type. Your opponent's being an asshole and playing Sky Strikers? F them, call spells. Your opponent's me? And they're playing Palios? Call traps! Your opponent's playing combo? Call monster, baby. This isn't even a hard one to turn. If you can somehow get more than one of these or reuse re its ability, you can do something else. <laughs> this is a fantastic floodgate because if you have this alongside some other negate, you can pretty much shut your opponent down for anything. Yeah, basically telling your opponent they can't 
played like 90% of their deck is good in the game of Yu-Gi-Oh. Matter of fact, it's uh, it's how we play Yu-Gi-Oh nowadays. Yu-Gi-Oh is only fun when I'm the only one allowed to play it. I love Shockmaster. I think he's absolutely fantastic. Weird as hell looking, but that kind of floodgate is absurd. A little costly to make, but it's worth it if you use it against the right deck and you call the right thing. All right, guys, that was the top 10 best sea monsters in the game. I hope you enjoyed the list. I certainly did. I felt like this recording's an hour long. How, how long is this? 39 minutes. Ow. Oh, I got to get this down to 20. All right, guys, let's see how I do. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Leave your comments down below. And remember, guys, if you don't troll the matter who will, I'll see you guys next time. Just a quick special thank you to all my supporters over on Patreon. You guys make the whole channel possible. You guys have no idea how much it means to me that you guys do that. If you guys want to be part of the Goblet Attack Force, link for the Patreon down in the description below. Ah, don't you know what to do? Think all you like, you're still gonna stomp that subscribe button. Make sure to watch these other videos. Come on, quit stalling. Fossilizing over here. Slow play. Judge!